no rest No, no I've been down so long That my mind can't get no rest No, no This ain't easy, darling Cause the devil's on my trail Hello guys, welcome back to the channel Bit of an interesting day today we're going to um, shoot down and pick up a new Talawana X15 camper with Shannon Viv from Vixen Adventures. So we're going to go and do the handover and see exactly what we get for the money. So, bit of a garbage day today. Um, but it is what it is. So, got to take the uh, old daily down, which isn't exactly the best car for the city, but... That's what we're gonna do. Take it down, catch up with them guys, and they're down in Mandra, so. They're down in Mandra, so we'll shoot down there. The handover's about, uh, what time is it? I think the handover was about two o'clock. We're gonna go down there, find out a bit of the background history on them, and, um, See exactly where they come from, how they're made, turnaround times, prices, extras, modifications, all that sort of thing. We're gonna to go to go through that with the guys down there. We're gonna see what Shan's opted for a couple of extras for his new van, and it's exciting times. Like we've been working on our van here, which is a no-plan van. Um, we're doing all lithium set up on that, so we're pretty much just about ready to go with that. Um, new solar panels are coming for that. We're also, tomorrow is going to be another episode I'm going to make up. We're going to help Jake get his van ready. Um, we've got about three weeks, guys. Three weeks till we're out of here. So we start on the 1st of June. We've got about three weeks from now till that date. And we're on the road. It's getting pretty scary. We're heading to Cape York. So if you haven't heard already, Shannon Viv from Vixen Adventures, they're going to Cape York with us. Dave and Nick from... Uh, Dave and Nick from Dave and Nick's Adventures, right? They're coming with us. They're actually already gone. So in actual fact, we're going with them, see? They're in Mildura at the moment. They've had a pretty good run over. Um, so yeah, we're leaving Perth here again to go for another Cape York adventure. Yeah, there's a couple of things that's sort of uh, making me a little nervous, which is like taking the van on the beach and things like that. So we're going to be taking this van here to Fraser on the um, on the barge on the ferry. So it's going to be an interesting time. Anyway, enough of that. Let's go jump in the car. She should be warm enough. We're going to head down now to go and see Shannon Viv and meet up at the Talawana campers, Oztrack campers. See you down there. Well, <laughs> we're not uh, off to a very good start here. We've got no fuel. So, this thing's not the best on juice. We're gonna go straight in to get some juice now and probably a bite to eat and shoot down hill. Excited or what? Oh yeah. And yeah, picking up a new addition. I think I've uh, earned the right to upgrade from a camper trailer in my 50s. So <laughs> I've 
I think I've held off long enough. Yeah. Nah, she's time, gonna be good. Time for the good stuff. We'll get her on the track tonight, see how she goes. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty standard so this is all by law you have to have anything over two ton you need to have a breakaway system so that comes apart pulls out when you if, if there's a catastrophic yep. failure with with your hitch or your tow package in your vehicle um, so that'll just apply pressure to the brakes using the house batteries um, and slow your van down to a stop you know you don't want your van going run away without your vehicle in front of it so that helps that um, we pop open this front storage point here so you've got two compartments up the front here uh, one's for your gas one's for whatever you like um, gas compartment is only for gas and gas related equipment so that's also a legal thing and also for insurance um, and you do have dra drainage points in here for the gas to, to, to leave um, so you will get dust in this side just keep that in mind but this side here is um, also has drainage points where they can be legally they can be pl plugged up and then with the seals around will stop dust getting in on this side um, tie down points inside here for your jerry cans um, so you can tie your jerry cans down inside there you can fit two jerry cans there or you can tie anything you want down in there really um, but yeah that's what um, that's what the front compartment's for and you've also got a Light in there. Okay. So that's, that, that's the front compartment anyway. In the front here you've got uh, your holes for the fully enclosed canvas annex. Um, and, and that's yeah, so the tonomise will have the the poles for the ensuite shower and tent as well. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. So this just has the poles for the annex at the moment. Um, obviously, a bit of room in there for some fishing rods or whatever else as well. Um, and the the canvas annex weighs about 45 kilos, and that's included in the tear weight as well. So if you wanted to leave that at home, you, you, that comes down off your tear. So you've got that much more storage to play with. Um, and then that obviously frees this up for a bit more storage. Yeah. As well. So. Coming around the front here, um, we've got the fridge slide, so, oh, yeah. so pull that out, you'll hear it click a few times. So that's, that's locking in place now. Um, this is where you can fit your fridge. Double drawer pantry, so press this little button here, that'll lock that out, and then you can slide this forwards. So you've got a nice amount of storage up there and down here as well. Splits it up a bit, um, then push it back, and that'll lock it back in place as well. So, Nice bit of storage there as well. So they will just need cut the lights in and out automatically. If you leave that open, they'll stay lit for 10 minutes and then yep. turn off. Oh, man. So they're not going to run your batteries dry. Because with the minute you, it picks up something, it'll come exactly back on. on again. So if you come up here and you've had this open, you want to yep. turn the light on, you just go like that. Yep, done. Turn it on. Yep. Another 12 volt accessory plug here. And a cigarette light, light a circuit. Cigarette lighter plug as well. So what's the two here for? So one of those is for your gas, gas piezo yep. on the stove. Another one, they come included as well with these clip-on lights. Oh yeah. So you can plug in to there if you'd like to. Oh wow. And then you've got a clip-on light. pretty bright. You can use that anywhere, yeah. Handy for the kitchen. So you've got this light here, but that's, you can't really move that around and, no. and point it where you need it sometimes. So if you want to clip this on and point it at something specific. Or you can put it anywhere. These these plugs are around the van, so but actually, I'll pop this down first. You've got a switch in here, so you can turn the lights on and off from the outside of the van. So if someone's inside sleeping and you want to turn the lights on and off, or and you can change. Uh, obviously, you got the switch to check it to orange as well. Yeah, so that's that's only controlled from inside though. Yep. So, the dimming light. You've got the mozzie lights on as well. It's been... Yeah, yeah. yeah a little chase board. Um, your TV will slide out from inside and click in here as well. And you've got all your accessories. So you've got more of those 12 volt plugs like those ones here. 
um, your UHF antenna for your TV will come in and plug here as well. Oh, yep. Um, and yeah, you can plug your DVD player in there. So the DVD player runs from inside. Yep. All runs through here as well. Yeah. Um, two spare tyres, obviously. Pretty much a zero offset wheel. Yep. So, and six by 100 stud pattern. Same as a Triton or a Land Cruiser. Um, 265, 75 R16s. It's a pretty common tyre size as well. Yeah, that is. So, yeah, pretty universal. Um, two spares. We've got the hitch point down here as well. So if you want to put a bike rack in, um, or uh, you know whatever you want to put an outboard or something on the back there. Another no, tow bar. Another tow bar. I see you got some nice recovery, decent recovery. Points. Yeah. Yep. That's nice really decent, good data. Decent recovery points for these shackles. Two 120 litre uh, water tanks and an 80 litre grey. Um, everything inside the van is plumbed to go through the grey water. So your vanity and your sink and yep. your shower, yep. all that comes through here. Um, and then you've got a ball valve inside which will change between the two fresh water tanks. So the difference, we, we, we offer the Dometic and the Tedford toilet system. The difference between the two is the Dometic will run off the house water tanks. So there's a pump built in here, but that'll suck water from your main water tanks, whereas the Tedford yep. has its own 14 litre oh, okay. um, flush tank, um, which you have to add an additive to, whereas the Dometic is happy to still run off fresh water. And then the only additives you put in are in the cartridge itself. Oh, okay. Yeah. Follow you. Yeah, so you don't have to keep an eye on any separate levels, which is handy. The only level you have to keep on top of is the waste level, and there's an indicator right. inside which will tell you when that's full. Um, these compression locks as well, by the way, around the whole van, so these are adjustable. So you've got um, these rubber seals that go all the way around, and they will obviously change characteristics with age. Um, so to, to accommodate for that, you've got these adjustable compression locks. Fold that down, so again, these little blue tabs, Push down on that, your kitchen will slide out and lock in place. Um, got this extra bench space or drying racks. That'll fold it down. This is a new addition actually, got the holes in here. Yeah, I noticed that. I was going to say, that's yeah. definitely an yeah. improvement. Yeah, so you can actually, water will fall through yeah. that now, whereas it probably wouldn't have just put a pulled before. Um, got this electrical cable that'll come out. Uh, and plug into here for your piezo and your gas stove. Right in there as well, so your, your sink will sit, sit up like that. And there you go, so you got yep. electric ignition. Um, hot and cold water's plumbed constantly. Gas, you've got a bayonet fitting which will slide out of the front, of the, or the back, sorry, of the kitchen, yep. and plumb in down underneath yep. there. So and that's got, just a standard gas rig, really. Yeah, yeah, standard gas bayonet fitting. Um, and there's two there, so you've got you can have an accessory plugged in there as well, like a, like a Weber barbecue or a, or a heater or yeah. something. Yeah. So you've got yeah, so we've got a cigarette lighter socket here, Anderson plug there as well, and 240 volt, and a cooling fan. So your Anderson plug will run on the fridge circuit inside. So you've got a fridge button. Yep. That'll power this Anderson plug. Yep. I highly recommend running your fridge through an Anderson plug. Um, in my experience, cigarette lighter sockets and fridges don't play nicely with each other. Especially corrugations. Especially on corrugations. Um, and this runs on your cigarette lighter circuit as well. So it makes it a little bit confusing up the front with the button. So if you can get away with it, figure out a way to, to have an Anderson plug wiring your fridge. Yep. Um, and then that, you just use this for accessories or what have you. Um, 240 volt obviously available for your fridge. Personally, I'll just keep running it on the 12 volt. Yeah. and then allow 240 volt to top, top up your 12 volt system. Um, but everyone's got their own opinions. Um, this fan up here is controlled by this switch here. Yep. It's not flipped on in the inside at the moment. Yep. That will suck cold or cooler air, hypothetically, from the inside of the cab and push it out through, down here through the filter. Um, oh, okay. The idea of that is if you're parked up in a, somewhere in the sun, and you've got the door closed and the fridge inside, it's gonna keep circulating air through here. So, massive box. 
Um, there's a lot of junk in there at the moment. All your rubbish. There's your shower tap on the way. Yep. Just walks off. Yeah. Um, where we go, we generally go heavily off road, yeah. like this has been designed to do. Yeah. And hence, why we're actually not putting that on, because I cannot afford to be another hundred. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. So hence, yeah, yeah, leave it off. That's yeah. why um, we intend wrapping the van as well. So yeah. we're actually going to take it down to AAA yeah. windscreens and wrap yeah. down in Rockingham, yeah. and they're going to be wrapping both sides of the van. Yeah. And same here. So this is whatever you want to put in here, but I, I like to call it the toolbox. So anything, I mean, if you're taking the cruiser, I'm sure you've got plenty of tools and stuff. Oh, yes. That. So, <laughs> oh, yes. Gonna need plenty of tools. Control <laughs> 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 it. Yeah. <laughs> Take them where you can get them. Yeah. All right. That's pretty much it for the outside of the van, except for um, suspension and tyres. So, Obviously, twin twin shock independent suspension, trailing arm suspension, um, all greased up and torqued up in in the production shed here. So, are the, um, are the wheel bearings greased? Yeah, or, or from the production in, in the factory? They're greased in the factory and then yep. checked here. Right, so, so they have yeah, been checked. They've been checked. Yeah, right. That, yeah. That's good. There's yeah. a lot of manufacturers out there that don't. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh look, we. we one of the pain points for our vans was was wheel bearings and shocks. Yep. So we've gone through and we've revamped those. We've developed yep. our own shocks in house and we've gone through and sourced a much better wheel bearing. Yep. So I, I'm a big fan of Japanese bearings. Um, yeah. But I, as I said, it's all been greased. Um, it's all been torqued. So this is your toe and camber adjusters here, um, and then you've got grease points up there as well for your bushes. Um, uh, these are torqued down to 140 newton meters. Um, and your wheel nuts are torqued down to 120 newton meters. Okay, good. Um, after 100 k's, you're gonna, you're gonna want to check that. Yep. If you're going on the corrugation, check it every morning. Yep. Or every night. What's the warranty on the actual suspension and those type of things, and on the van in general? The so the chassis is five years, and yep. the suspension and everything like that is 12, 12 months. 12 months. Yep. Yep. Good. Um, and then of all the joinery and everything like that's 12 months and then all of the accessories are all covered by the individual magic manufacturers yeah but give me a call give ray a call yep if you have any problem with anything and we'll yep. handle it for you yep um it's just yeah we'll have to we'll have to go to the manufacturer Correct. but we'll take care of that for you you don't have to stuff about with that yourself good that's yeah. great cool. and we'd like to i mean it's different over here in perth because we're a bit further away from the eastern states correct but we like to sort of try and get everything sorted as best we can yeah. in house before in house. it goes before out, going yeah. up, up that way yeah. well that's how it should be in any case yeah, absolutely so. i agree yeah very good customer service that's, that's what sets us apart mate customers after sales service is where you yeah. have to shine yeah yep. i think that's where you'll make your name as well yeah you can you can sell me the best van ever yeah and have the worst customer service yeah and that's just going to leave a sour taste in your mouth no matter how good the van is that's right yeah. so you've got small little legal issues if your customer yeah. service and backup is great yeah you'll find people will come back you might not be happy with one or two things but yeah when i went there i would looked after and i've got great customer service yeah and that's what matters yeah so you've obviously got the electric, electric awning and electric step. Um, just rip on those. Opens and closes. You don't want to run it too far. Oh, do it. You don't want to run it too far without letting those little legs down. Legs down yeah. um, the reason why is because I'll get it to about here. You can see it now already. It's starting to it's starting to droop to droop onto these shoulders. Ah, uh, yep, that's very important. Yeah, so just you want to give it a bit of support at this point. Yep. So you drop the legs down. Yep. And then just support it as it goes out. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Don't be running it out to here. I mean, structurally it might may be fine. It's the it's the continual. Canvas. Yeah. If you do keep They'd doing it, it's going to rub it, and it's eventually going to wear it all out. And I mean, it, it, in in our state spec, it's not that fast, so you would have the time to move the legs as it's busy coming out in any case. Yeah. So it pops out. So you've got two sides to the roof. You've got the assistant side and the handle side. Whether you're going up or down, do the assistant side first. Um, just because it's got assistance, so it makes it a bit easier. So the first step is to take these retaining clips out. Like that. There. 
and I like to get underneath it, use my legs to do the most of the lifting. Um, it's not that's not too bad. Once you get the hang of it, it's a lot easier. Sometimes some people the first time they do it, they're like, oh, that's quite heavy. But it's really once you get underneath it and use your legs to do the lifting. Not that bad. Push it back like that. Put the clips back in straight away. Just as a safety precaution, if nothing else. Just like that. And then this side here. Up. Yeah. I really like that. I'll rate it too. People, it blows so many people's minds. Like, oh, that's awesome. That's the one thing I did notice as well. Yeah. It was really impressive. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's another thing. Yeah. The head banger. That saved my life a few times. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually banging the head. Um, under here, you've got gas switch down the bottom on the bottom shelf there you got the gas switch for the stove pretty standard stuff and two burner stove and the domestic sink in here um, only difference being this is a push button start rather than the electric start so but I mean it's only how often seriously are you going to be cooking inside anyway? It's only really if you really fell weather outside yeah. and you want to do a couple of poached eggs or something That's like right. that instead of being out there in the yeah. Make yourself a coffee in the morning. Yep. And that's it. Very nice. Indirect lighting right there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's good. Even, the little touches, like, even like the um, wireless charging pad on the beach behind Well, it. that's what that's what I really like about the van. You know, just the small touches like you yeah. know, your little drying rack and, and things where you can hang things and stuff like that. That caught my eye. The under kind of lighting, that caught my eye. Yeah. Um, the little hanging area on the shower door. Yeah. You know, that's what's also called my. Yeah. The proper handle. Yeah. You know how many yeah. caravans I've I go to? I've heard that a lot, yeah. And the first thing I do, and I go like this, and all you can do is you can rattle that thing yeah. by hand, never mind riding on a corrugated road. Yeah. The other thing I notice is three hinges. Yeah. So, and it's proper hinges. Yeah. Um, you've got the proper wireless charging point for your phone so you know you don't have to plug it in or whatever you can just put it down and if it's on just here there we go straight on yeah. see it come on and you can ch while it's charging so all those type of things you've got a big enough area over here with a 240 volt plug so you can have an air fryer and you know those type of things be in a microwave yeah. a small little yeah. mini microwave and stuff like that now those are all the little things that I, I, I noticed when I looked at the actual van. Yeah, I'm a big fan of this van. I'm a big fan of the layout as well. You've got the extra bench space inside. Um, a nice, still a nice cut size sitting area. And a king size bed, but it's only a yeah. 15 foot bed well, that I mean, doesn't pop out. There's three of us are now, including Josh, Yeah. standing in this van. And yeah. you know, we're not on top of each no. other. Yeah. That's, still, that's the thing that I like the most about this van. Still room to swing a cat. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Another thing that amazed me was the workmanship underneath there. Mm. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. So, I'll this up here. A little bit of storage in there. Um, I wouldn't be storing bricks in there because you do have to get underneath here to access the smarts of the operation. So you've got a Seaflow pump. Um, and a ball valve to choose between your front and rear tank. General rule is the handle is pointing away from um, the tank that you're using. So you've got front and rear. Um, so if you want to use the front tank, you want to point it to that way, to, to the front tank. And then same with the rear, flip it around the other way. And now on the rear tank. So you get your front and rear yep. stamped in there. Stamped in there. Yep. Um, it's all, yeah, like I was saying before with the the reducer, pressure reducer, this has all been pressure tested in house here. It's um, it's going to blow off on the outside, not in here. Um, it's you know, it's all high quality brass fittings. It's it's going to last the test. Yeah, well, time. that's what I re that's what yeah. impressed me. You know, you got those little cheapy push yeah, little plumbing the pieces, ones with the little and in them. yeah, that's what impressed me most is is. is Proper decent plumbing yeah. and proper brass fittings and stuff like that. Yeah. That was impressive about it to me. Yeah. Yeah. 
I, I agree with you. On this side here is where you've got the unbelievable Truma hot water system. Um, it's a gas and electric. Um, like we said before with the, the cover, take it off to run on gas, otherwise it'll run on, on electricity. 240 volt mains power. Um, yeah. And your, your mains water pressure as well, just going back to this, this pump system, the mains water pressure will pressurize the same circuitry that the pump pressurizes. So oh. you don't have to have the pump turned on. You just connect That's great. Power, uh, water and then it just, I mean, you can have the pump turned on, but it's just going to be cutting in and out because it's a pressure sensing pump. So turn the pump off, plug mains water pressure in and it, just use the van as you would with the pump on. Um, That's good. 240 volt, 12 volt lights, everything is accessible at the, at the top there. And then if your missus sleeps on your uh, one side, you've got a nice little storage yeah. area there in the corner too, yeah. which was actually mint. Yeah. And you've got your, your fan. Yep. So the fans have got three speeds and then a timer as well, timer function. So you can, if you don't want to have the fan on running all night, but I mean, at the end of the day, you got, like you said, you got. 200 amp hours. Yeah, that's going to use. Oh, next to nothing. Two yeah, they use nothing. Yeah. yeah. Just the bathroom. So I think we're really proud of our bathroom. It's nice and big, which is something that, that it is. Um, a lot of a lot of smaller vans seem to sacrifice a bit of bathroom space. Well, that's what put me off of a, a, a lot of vans. You, you yeah. can hardly you can't even lift your elbows. Yeah, yeah. And not just that, but this. <laughs> like I'm a taller guy. Yes. And I don't like, like there's no point going for a shower if you can't actually wash yourself. So having mm. it up nice and high is... Um, and you've got this that comes, yeah. blocks yep. that off, doesn't it? Yeah, so it'll come across. And I haven't unlocked it, haven't you? There we go. Yeah. This was the other impressive part that... This is my favourite part. Yeah. I'll get this one out of the way as well. Oh, yep. Now, I'll just start from the right, just looking at that really good plumbing. Yeah, so that's where your mains water pressure comes in, and then you can see the rear, um, the rear water tank filling and the breather hose as well, coming up there as well. So that's what I was talking about before with the cap being the breather. Yep. So the breather goes down to the tank, and then goes up to the cap. So the cap is the breather. Yeah. But coming over into here, we've got the, well, first of all, the Renergy lithium iron uh, 100 amp hour batteries. So the van comes standard with 200 yep. amp hours of lithium battery. Absolutely, yep. It comes standard with all of this. So we, we don't do model up, model up, model up, model up. It's yep. just one model. It comes with everything standard. So you've got the 200 amp hours of lithium, 400 watts of solar on the roof, and you've got your Red Arc gear. The, the, you know, I love this stuff. This is no, really, yeah, really, it's really, really top quality. Yep. Um, Red Arc battery manager, manager 30 BMS and a 2000 watt um, pure sine wave inverter and if you know anything about electronics you know how important it is to have a pure sine wave inverter yes um, so you're not blowing up I mean you guys have known with your GoPros and your laptops and everything correct you're not going to blow anything up like that no dirty power and it really is a clean sine wave yeah if you ever put one on a scope it's yeah very clean um, yeah so your power comes in mains power comes in through this power point here so this is the only power point in the van that is not powered by the inverter the reason being is that this comes in mains power goes into your battery management system which is what's topping up your 12 volt batteries if this was powered by the inverter it would be charging itself every time you charge it. Maybe that's something I should be checking. <laughs> was it loose? Yeah, it was loose. <laughs> You're just free loosening it, aren't you? Mate, I, 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 I amped it up so much, he's going to have to give that thing a big heave home, mate. And just went... <laughs> <laughs> Almost didn't leave the branch. How's the service? They even changed the ball for you.
your brakes work? Yep, everything works. Made a U-E, feel it out good, actually turns quite well. Nice tight turning circle, so... Doesn't feel too heavy? Uh, not yet. <laughs> yeah, not yet, but it is missing 700 kilos, it's less than you go into it, so... 